Next on Worcester News tonight, saying goodbye to a hero. Thousands come to the wake of Worcester firefighter Christopher Roy. Plus, fire departments in the area are helping out this weekend to give Worcester Fire time to mourn their fallen brother. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brittany Schaefer. The community is saying their final goodbyes to Christopher Roy this weekend. The firefighter's wake is taking place now, and his funeral is Saturday morning. The 36-year-old died battling a five-alarm fire earlier this week. Tonight, thousands are at St. John's Catholic Church paying their respects. Our Cam Jandro is there now. He joins us live with the details. Cam? Yeah, Brittany, a very sad day here in the city of Worcester as thousands stood in line right here at St. John's Church on Temple Street in Worcester to pay their final respects to fallen firefighter Christopher Roy. Earlier today, more than 400 Worcester Fire Department firefighters, as well as thousands from all across the state of Massachusetts, came to pay their respects to one of their fallen brothers. 36-year-old Roy had been in the department for only two and a half years, and he tragically leaves behind a nine-year-old daughter named Ava. Prior to the services today, we heard from the Worcester Fire Department. We're going to have an appropriate send-off for Chris uh, to show the, the way the fire service comes together to take care of one of its brothers. Only the fire service understands what it is that we do every day, and um, we really appreciate it amongst ourselves, and we really appreciate the community coming out for us to, um, to remember Chris. The outpouring of support from this community has been humbling. Uh, it's been truly outstanding in uh, so many different forms. And in this time that it, it is difficult for our firefighters, uh, it is helpful. Uh, and it is helpful to the family. We've been there before, I mean, with, a, with the tragedies in 99 and 2011. It doesn't get any easier. Um, this is a devastating loss and it's taken its toll. Now, Lavoie says the department's biggest priority right now is taking care of the Roy family as well as all of their firefighters in the Worcester Fire Department. He says every single one of their employees has gone through crisis intervention training and they've also been in contact with the significant others of every single firefighter to make sure they understand the warning signs of mental health problems should any of those arise following this tragedy. Services tonight are expected to go until 8 o'clock. We're live in Worcester. I'm Cam Jandro. Worcester News Tonight. While firefighters try to cope with the loss of their brother Christopher Roy, a bill aims to secure services and support for them. The state Senate has approved a bill ensuring privacy for first responders getting peer counseling. Senator Michael Moore says a lack of confidentiality has prevented some first responders from getting the help they need. We've been trying to destigmatize people trying to seek help from mental health services. And the whole time, yet we've had these critical, these first responders who see some of the most horrific things, and we've just kind of left them out there in the wind. The Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts offers peer counseling for their members and has been working to get this bill passed. They say it's much needed measure for the state's first responders. So this will be an added protection to those counselors and quite frankly to our members it'll give them the opportunity and the security to open up to to their peers and kind of discuss what's going on in their lives and what they're dealing with the bill now moves on to the house before reaching the governor's desk a memorial fund set up for roy's nine-year-old daughter opened on monday the information on how to donate is on the screen checks may be made out to the ava roy fund and can be mailed to the worcester fire department credit union Earlier Friday, the street was lined with people saluting the fallen firefighter as his casket left the Alfred Roy and Sons funeral home on its way to St. John's. Some along the route, as young as three-year-olds, were paying their respects. Our Olivia Lemon joins us live now with more. Olivia. Yeah, Brittany, earlier today, firefighters lined Temple Street as fallen firefighter Christopher Roy was brought to St. John's Church. Meanwhile, uh, over on Hammond Street, students pre-K through eighth grade stood by the funeral home to say a final farewell. Elementary school students among the dozens who lined Hammond Street as fallen Worcester firefighter Christopher Roy's procession left Alfred Roy and Sons funeral home. 
The 36-year-old died earlier this week battling a five-alarm fire. The whole city of Worcester is devastated by the loss of the fire fire Roy. Students from St. Peter Central Catholic School gathered to pay their respects to firefighter Roy. We prayed for our firefighter Roy and his family each and every day and it seemed right to show our respect and to teach children about respect by stepping out today and standing in silence as the motorcade went by. Principal Meg Crisonis knows the Roy family. She says her daughter graduated with Christopher's brother Jay. Yeah, I remember his mom and dad um, and I remember Chris but we knew Jay because he graduated from St. Peter Marion with my daughter. Arthur Dolan held the American flag for Friday's procession to honor all firefighters, especially those who have died in the line of duty. It's a very emotional time for all of us, especially for those of us who have firefighters in our family. Dolan's brother retired from the department two years ago, was a district chief when firefighter John Davies passed away in 2011, and was a captain during the cold storage warehouse fire. He and his men from Webster Square Station uh, we're on the second floor when the all out was sounded because they realized that six firefighters were missing. He says holding the flag is a small way to pay his respects. He knows how tough a loss can be for firefighters and the whole community. Great sadness uh, thinking of all the firefighter families in the past that have lost their loved ones and how this will bring back memories of what happened to them. Now Dolan says he will also be standing out tomorrow with the American flag for Roy's funeral. Live at St. John's Church, Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. And Roy's funeral will be held at St. John's Church as well Saturday morning. Firefighters from across the state and country are expected to attend. The funeral begins at 10 a.m. A traffic advisory is in effect with many roads being closed starting at 8 o'clock. Green Street and all roads leading to it will be closed along with a portion of Harding Street. Immediately following the ceremony, Roy will be buried at Notre Dame Cemetery. Fire departments throughout the area will be staffing the city's firehouses to give Worcester Fire time to grieve. Firefighters from 25 different departments will be there to help, including some retired Worcester firefighters. And as our Roslyn Flaherty explains, there will be no shortage of support. Area fire departments are giving Worcester's firefighters a chance to mourn. They will be covering all of the city's firehouses before and after the funeral of Christopher Roy. It's what we can do in actions in terms to support our brother and sister firefighters in Worcester. Firefighters from 25 different departments will be taking over the stations for a 25 hour period. Auburn Fire Chief and District 7 Representative Stephen Coleman says there has been no shortage of support and they will continue to be there for the Worcester Fire Department. The reality is in, in, in you know, sort of the, the shining light in this is uh, we know that the Worcester Fire Department and the City of Worcester uh, would do this for any community uh, across this Commonwealth. Retired Worcester firefighters like John Griffin will also be on hand. They will be on the trucks directing the best route in case of an emergency. You go to frequent calls in the same area quite a bit, so you know those, and you might have to dust the cobwebs off. The retired lieutenant has experienced tragedy. He was working when six firefighters died in the cold storage warehouse fire and was on the department when John Davies died. It opens up those old wounds, you know, that you're, you put in the back of your mind because you go back to work, you try and get it done, but you're always thinking of those guys. He wants people to know the city will be protected while the Worcester Fire Department takes this time to remember a fallen brother. This is a tough time. There might be some emotional strains that, you know, affect people, um, but, you know, all in all, these the men and women of the Worcester Fire Department are here to protect them and they're going to continue to do that. 86 firefighters from towns around central Massachusetts will start at 7 a.m. and work until 7 a.m. Sunday to give the Worcester firefighters one last chance to say goodbye. In front of the Greendale Fire Station, Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. And we will have live coverage for the funeral of Christopher Roy here on Charter TV 3. Our coverage begins at 10 a.m. from St. John's Church. Switching gears now, warmer temperatures hitting central Massachusetts Friday. Let's send it over to meteorologist Michael Page for a quick look at what we can expect this weekend. Much milder today, finally reaching the 40s here in central Massachusetts. A welcome change after being so chilly for the last couple of days. Clouds have been increasing today, but radar is quiet this evening and it will stay that way. We have some light rain and snow showers missing to our north, but this batch of rain shower activity around the mid-Atlantic 
will impact us at least for part of the weekend, but we have a lot of dry times too. First of all, for tomorrow, temperatures will still be mild, 40s in many cases here in central Massachusetts. There may be a shower, especially in the Blackstone Valley, very early. Then we actually get into some sunshine during the afternoon. Then on Sunday, clouds return, some rain showers come in midday and afternoon, and then eventually we have some mixing with snow that will take place late Sunday into Sunday night, especially Worcester points north and west, Route 2 quarter. But you see the idea. Into the Monday morning commute, we'll have to watch for the potential of a little bit of snow or a wintry mix slowing the commute very briefly. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll talk much more about this in the hour by hour timeline on your weekend forecast. The Sterling Fire Department received a unique call Friday morning. They responded to a woman in labor on the highway. While the two paramedics say they were prepared, they got a pleasant surprise during the delivery. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. When paramedics Aaron Cullinane and Robert Nickerson responded to a woman in labor on the highway, they didn't know what to expect. You only have a few minutes to kind of process what you're about to go into. Friday morning, the two members of the Sterling Fire Department met the mom on the side of 190. And within minutes of getting her into the ambulance, a baby girl was born. But then another surprise came, a baby boy. We didn't know until we were delivering the first child and she says, oh, I have twins. And I thought maybe she had twins at home. And that was great because this wasn't her first pregnancy. Um, but no, she says, no, I'm delivering twins now. The department says they were prepared. In total, two ambulances and six people responded, including the fire chief. Luckily, we had enough hands on board to, to help out. The second twin was delivered like 10 to 15 minutes after, so he didn't wait much longer after his sister was born. It's Cullinane's first on-the-job delivery, and the twins make three and four for Nickerson. They say either way, it's a challenge they're ready for. They carry kits with the necessary equipment and go through the proper training. We do go to the, the maternity ward, and we do deliver um, a few children, at least three. Um, when you're in paramedic school. The department says it's a great feeling to help bring not one, but two new children into the world. It was nice to have a happy ending. It's like a light in all this darkness. The department says everything was textbook and went smoothly, even though they weren't expecting to deliver twins. They say both babies are healthy and doing well. In Sterling, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Right now, Sturbridge police need your help to find this man. They say he robbed the TD Bank on Main Street. Take a look at your screen. He's wearing a white winter hat, black sweatshirt, and blue gloves. If you see him, do not approach him. Call police immediately.